This is a special time of year. No, not coming around the table for Thanksgiving or trampling on each other for Chinese-made products on Black Friday. No, a different event. A time that on one November Saturday, lines will be drawn, neighborhoods will be divided, families even, states set upon each other, the football rivalry to end all rivalries, Ohio State Buckeyes versus Michigan Wolverines. Now, if you don't live in these two states or even in the US, you're probably very confused. It's college football. Now, if you're familiar or live in these two states, you know the rivalry. What's interesting is that what now is a football rivalry at one time was actual political hatred that almost erupted into full-out bloodshed two centuries ago. And their territorial dispute consisted of where I was born and raised. This is called the Toledo War. And this dispute was purely based on a cartography error. Enter early 1800s the Northwest Territory. When the U.S. got the land, the plan was to create, quote, not less than three, no more than five, future states. One inclusion was to draw a line straight east of the most southern tip of Lake Michigan, dividing what would be future Ohio and Michigan. Move forward to 1802, where Little Ohio was being born. The Enabling Act of 1802 used kind of the same language to decide the northern border, the southern tip of Lake Michigan. Problem was, nobody really had an accurate map or had a fair idea where that actually was. It wasn't like you could just Google map it. The only available one was this. For Ohio, this map was great. Drawing a straight line, Ohio would seize all of the Lake Erie coast and maybe even Detroit. But by 1803, a fur trapper notified the Ohio delegation that Lake Michigan actually extended far more south than everyone thought. Ohio panicked, because if the lake was too far south, they could end up losing miles of Lake Erie coast and the Maumee River in the process. So they made a provision. If the trapper was right and the lake was far more south than this map said, then Ohio's territory would at least be the northern tip of the Maumee Bay, which was right here. That way they don't lose the river in the process. Keep in mind by the time this was taking place, Lakes were a fundamental piece of transportation. There were no railroads, only horses, and since most of America looked like this, rivers and water were the best ways to get goods to the new frontier. And the most valuable river to both was the Maumee. Two years later, the Michigan Territory was born, drawing its border based on the Northwest Territory rule. Everything north of this line was Michigan, including Maumee Bay. Coming into direct conflict with Ohio's claim, who also wanted the bay. So both set up their own surveys, or people who confirm specific locations using geography. The US Surveyor General, yes that was a thing, was actually a former Ohio governor, so there was a little bias on the federal side. The official survey went off the 1802 Ohio claim and not the Northwest Territory. Michigan got mad, got their own survey, and as it turned out, as much as it pains me as an Ohioan to say, Michigan's claim was right. If this survey was done by all of our technology today, I'd be in Michigan territory. Michigan kind of just enforced its own law on the disputed land and ignored the official US survey. And the two states' borders just overlapped in a weird geographic limbo for a few decades in what became known as the Toledo Strip, named after this city. This wasn't much of a legal issue until Michigan wanted to be a state. But Congress wouldn't allow it until it made nice and figured out its border with Ohio. Ohio moved to make their claim official, and also make Michigan angry, by forming Lucas County in Maumee Bay. The county was named directly for the Ohio governor, Robert Lucas at the time. Michigan got mad. So mad, they said they would arrest anyone who claimed to be an Ohioan in this area. Both sides began to call up arms. And suddenly, in 1835, war between the two was at hand. Meanwhile in Washington, Andrew Jackson didn't like the situation spiraling out of control. Problem was, Michigan was right. They legally had the rights to the Strip. But Ohio was a swing state, and if he wanted to win re-election, he needed Ohio. By this time, both militias were moving into conflict by the Maumee River. Michigan occupied Toledo, shutting down elections. The funny thing about this conflict is that both sides, Ohioan and Michigander, were ready to kill each other. There was dire hatred, and propaganda actually began to circulate. 
Michigan papers gave in to rumors of an army of a million Ohioans, and Michigan said they would kill them all. There's an idea that the Ohioans began calling Michiganders Wolverines, not because they were cool badger things, but because Wolverines eat like savages. Anyway, the tensions exploded, and the Toledo War began. Don't think this was a huge violent conflict over the Holy Land of Toledo or something. There actually was fighting between the two in the summer of 1835. There was a battle, but it was just 50 shots fired and that was it. Most of the war was skirmishes and spying, usually by the sheriffs of the counties. The casualty of the war was a few people imprisoned and a guy shot in the leg. Andrew Jackson removed the Michigan governor for provocations. Michigan saw the writing on the wall and accepted that if it wanted to be a state, it needed to give up Toledo. And in exchange, Michigan got the Upper Peninsula instead. So, who really won in the end? Eh. I'd say it's even. Toledo, even though it's not the best city in America today, at least we're not Detroit, was for most of its history a healthy port town on the lake. Northwest Ohio became a vast area of farmland after draining the swamp. Michigan discovered iron and copper in the peninsula, and soon a prosperous mining economy began in the region. So did this war create our football rivalry? Probably not. If anything, it's one interesting coincidence. The rivalry between OSU and Michigan is because there are two dominating football programs so close geographically. Historically, they are always the biggest obstacles in each other's way, to either the Big Ten or National Championship. This rivalry is just the perfect storm. Now, with two relatively new coaches, it seems we're going to be tough rivals for years to come. I doubt our fighting will be outside the football field for now on. This is Cody of Knowledge Hub. Go Buckeyes.